with that, uh, the resolution is uh, performance enhancing drugs should be legal in professional sports. And I'm going to define everything pretty much at face value. Performance enhancing drugs, any drug that's going to enhance the performance of the athlete, um, should be legal. I mean, should be allowed in professional sports. And professional sports is just that. Anything that uh, earns money, I would say, is a professional sport. So with that, um, I would like the weighing, me excuse me, the weighing mechanism on this to be net benefits, to be the greatest good for the greatest number of people. And my contention number one is that by allowing performance-enhancing drugs into professional sports, we can benefit the economy. Why do we all really watch sports? We want to see a great clash in any type of sports. We want to see the best players and the best humanly physical possible um, job being done, such as football. I mean, it's brutal. People take a beating in football, and we'd like to see that. We wouldn't be as interested in football if it was tag football. All right, we want to see strength. We want to see performance, endurance. We want to see who can take a beating and keep on throwing that ball. Let's see, and my contention two would be uh, it benefits entertainment. Uh, I'm sorry, let me go back to contention one. I don't think I really fully developed that. Contention one, building the economy. If we're going to watch people play sports, we want to watch good people play sports. And watching these sports, we're going to spend money. It's going to benefit the economy if we allow performance enhancing drugs because it's going to provide a better clash. More people are going to watch. More people are going to invest their money. More people are going to spend money in the games. People on, well, athletes on performance enhancing drugs are going to uh, perform better, going to run faster and provide greater entertainment, which is going to provide um, more people watching, which is going to provide a better revenue for the economy, the professional players, and the games. Now, in my contention number two, benefit entertainment. Um, it's going to benefit the entertainment, like I said, kind of in contention number one, because we're going to want to watch the players because they're going to be better. They're going to be able to outperform anything that we can see a regular person do because this is their job. Their job is to entertain us when we get down to it, any way possible. And furthermore, players in professional sports are already taking performance-enhancing drugs. They just haven't been caught yet. So they're providing an unequal ability within these sports already. If we were to legalize it in sports, it would level the playing field, providing for better games and better entertainment overall. Now, moving into contention number three, it pushes the boundaries of human limitations. <clears throat> we all take performance-enhancing drugs. I took one right before I came here today in the form of a rock star with juice. We take the five-hour energy drinks, we take caffeine, we drink coffee, we take uppers, downers, we take things to enhance our moods, we take things to uh, calm us down and focus. Everybody already is taking performance-enhancing drugs. So where do we define the line between legal performance-enhancing drugs and illegal performance-enhancing drugs? There are some players that are going to be completely abstinent with drugs at all. They're not going to drink coffee. They're not going to eat chocolate. They're, chocolate's got caffeine in it, by the way. They're not going to eat chocolate. They're not going to take uh, energy drinks. They're not going to take sports drinks. They're not going to take creatine, glutamine, androstine. Well, androstine's illegal now. But um, the point is, is that we have some players already taking legal performance-enhancing drugs and some taking illegal performance-enhancing drugs. If we want to level the playing field among all the players, we would just legalize performance-enhancing drugs in professional sports and see what they can do. And uh, with that, I would like to go back over my contentions, which is contention number one, we're going to benefit the economy by legalizing performance-enhancing drugs in professional sports. My contention number two is that we're going to benefit entertainment with performance-enhancing um, drugs in professional sports. And my contention number three is it's going to push the boundaries of human limitations. <laughs> So first of all, I'm going to give you a value that I think should be added, which is fairness of everybody, just overall fairness. And I'd like to state that the net benefits of the greatest good for the greatest number of people 
is actually Kantianism, which from, from Kant's point of view, you should not alter your body in any way. So I, I'm finding it kind of ironic that he's using this um, kind of value greatest good for the greatest number of people by saying it's better to alter your body. We can't said specifically never <laughs> alter your body. So I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, so first of all, I'm going to go over um, my case and then address his. So first of all, I have risks, risk factor. This is all from the Mayo Clinic Health Guide, which is a very trusted source. Um, performance enhancing drugs that, um, that players generally take are like steroids that uh, when you inject level of testosterone. And what happens when you do that is uh, you get more aggressive. So it actually changes your personality. I mean, aggression is good to a certain point, like football players, you know, we want them to tackle each other, but when you get to that level of aggression and you can't turn it on and you can't turn it off, we don't want football players trying to maul other football players and break their legs because they're just so ready to go and aggressive and it starts becoming a factor of injuring people. There's a case of Manny Ramirez, which is actually just recent. He's a, he was on the LA Dodgers and the Red Sox. He ended up being charged with um, abuse towards his significant other. He was charged with slapping her, and he slapped her so hard that her head hit the headboard and ricocheted back. And um, he tested positively for testosterone injections multiple times. And he just ended up cutting off his career because he couldn't take it anymore. And um, instead of taking the penalty, which was like 100 games, he just said, nope, I'm done, I'm retired. So after going through this performance enhancing drug routine, he ends up slapping his significant other, going to court, and losing his whole entire career. So I think that's not going to be beneficial for the greatest number of people because it doesn't benefit him, it doesn't benefit the audience because they're no longer going to be able to watch him play anymore. Um, so also, designer steroids, they're not FDA tested or approved. They have no medical um, use that's approved at all whatsoever. And um, they can actually cause infertility. And um, when they're taken at such a high level that sports players do it, because you don't take low doses, because low doses don't do much, you take high doses of these steroids so that you build up your muscle mass and you can work harder without injuring your muscles. So when they take them at such a high level that um, the, the FDA actually considers it unethical to do tests on these because they don't want to injure people by giving them such high doses of the drug. So we're already at an unethical level of drug use, so why would we want to legalize that? Um, other things, is it sets a bad example for teenagers and people alike. We, we view sports people, they're in a spotlight. There's something that represents us. Why do we want someone representing us to be hopped up on steroids like the Hulk running down a field taking people out? That's not what we want to say. Yep, that's America. Look at that little drugged up macho running down football fields and hitting a baseball bat and splitting in things in two because he's so big. Um, it's not a good example for people because then they're like, oh, well, if we legalized it for them, shouldn't we be able to do the same? And also, uh, for fairness, it just ruins the state of the game. There's, it becomes a competition of who can in inject the most drugs and handle it without passing out so that they can run and try and kill someone on the field, of a, <laughs> on a baseball field or a football field. It doesn't become about who's actually talented. It becomes about who can make themselves better through use of drugs which we say baseball is America's pastime. So America's pastime is watching drugged people hit a ball. That's a little depressing, I'd like to say. Um, there's uh, Roger Clemens and also Barry Bonds. Um, they were the Giants at the time and the Yankees. Um, they both have gone and had mistrials for this testing of positive um, drugs and stuff. So many, many people take them. But it never ends up benefiting them good. They end up going to court over things. They end up getting more aggressive. So overall, it's not that great. And then there's examples of like Kenny Griffith Jr., and I'm sorry, I don't know exactly how to pronounce his name, but in Chiro, where they don't take drugs, yet they're still amazing baseball players. They have like hitting records and stuff. 
Shouldn't we be valuing their amazing qualities that they have naturally instead of injecting themselves to make themselves better? Which causes, like I said, infertility and other harmful things, which isn't good for the people. So when he says, when I'm going over his contentions, it, benefits, it pushes the boundaries. Well, it pushes it too far to where people become sick and they become um, ill and they change their personalities because they become so aggressive. And do we want that to be our form of entertainment? He says it's better as entertainment for them to have these horrible mutations in their body, like human growth hormone. It's just unnatural is what it is. Um, benefiting the economy, again, do we want to value sorry, drugs over the economy? So first off, I'd like to uh, denounce the changing to weighing mechanism with fairness. I don't believe that we need to take fairness into account when we're talking about greatest good for the greatest number of people because it's not going to be fair sometimes. And as far as Cantonism, um, he came up with this net benefits. I can prove right now that we knew about net benefits prior to Cantonism. There was war over turf, and there was people that stayed back at the home camps in any culture that you go into, staying back at the home camps, and they're battling for fertile ground, which is going to benefit the greatest number of people. And they said, hey, you few strong soldiers are going to go into war and sacrifice yourself for the greatest good for the greatest number of people. So I'm not talking about Cantonism here. I'm talking about the greatest good for the greatest number of people. And that doesn't have to mean that it's going to, um, that we can't modify our bodies in some sort of way. So we can just disregard that. So jumping right into it, because I don't have too much time left here. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you that my contention number two and three were both dropped, so you can flow those across. The benefit for entertainment, it was never contested. Uh, benefit the economy, actually, was never contested either, and um, pushes the boundaries of human limitations, really wasn't contested either. So you can flow all three of those contentions across. However, what I was given was a bunch of risks for this, so I want to address those. Um, the Mayo Clinic steroids injection testosterone increases aggression, sure. Testosterone in your body does increase aggression. Does it peak out a certain limit? Sure. Is it healthy? Sure. There's a lot of people that have a lot of, amount, a lot of testosterone in their body naturally, and these are aggressive people. We see them. These are the type of people that are going to be playing sports or are going to be competitive. Aggression is not necessarily a bad thing. In the case where um, Randy Ramirez bounced his wife's head or girlfriend's head off of a, a headboard, you know, that, that's unfortunate, but that happens with a lot of people that don't even take steroids. And there's a lot of people that take steroids that aren't beating people up or turning green and running through the end zone naked. You know, the Hulk's clothes gets big, tears off. Anyways, moving on. So, um, FDA won't test steroids. That is a fallacy. FDA tests steroids and we use steroids medically every single day. Fairness, it ruins the game. Okay, well, if we want more fairness, legalizing them would be the most fair thing because there's already people taking steroids. So that's not fair to have some people illegally doing it and others that are forced to not do it and have to compete with these people. Um, First of all, I'd like to state that when my opponent said that none of his contentions were addressed, I actually used his exact wording and addressed all three. And so I'm going to go over where he says about the fairness. I never said we should replace his value, uh, his criteria, I just said we should add the value of fairness, which is where I'm coming from. And it was actually fairness of the game, not just fairness overall. And um, he says, we knew about net benefits and uses the example of war. War for battling for turf. Well, I think it can be argued that that's actually not beneficial for everybody, for the greatest number of people, because he said back in history, there's been multiple cases where kingdoms were just like, yep, let's expand, I, I want more stuff. So they go and slaughter other cultures and completely decimate them just so they could have more stuff. That's not necessarily good for everybody. What about those thousands of people who are now dead for the sake of getting some cool piece of jewelry? That's essentially not beneficial for the greatest number of people. So I think that can be an entirely different debate in essence and should be withdrawn. Um, and then also, he goes to my uh, risks. He says, sure, it increases things. Just keep saying, sure, sure, sure. Well, these are serious risks. He says, aggression isn't necessarily a bad thing. But at the high level of dosages that you have to take in order 
to have your muscle mass expanded like that and to be able to work out like that, it does become a bad thing. Most, a lot of people in jail have aggressive behavior, so it actually can be proven that aggression can and often is bad when it's at that high of a level. And so it shouldn't be, Manny Ramirez's case shouldn't be disregarded because it's actually a case of he took steroids a lot and tested positive for them multiple times, ended up hitting his significant other, hurting her. She was bruised and injured. That's not aggression is a good thing. That's aggression is a bad thing when it gets to that level. And he says the FDA will not test them, that that's a lie. I said the FDA won't test them at that high of a level. I never said the FDA doesn't test steroids at all. It's considered unethical to test them at that high of dosages that these athletes have to take in order to become that bulky. So actually we can't prove um, the, the FDA doesn't take that, I think that should be disregarded because FDA doesn't test at that high of a level. Um, and so i just like to say uh, he didn't address anything for my setting example. Actually, that contention was dropped, that it sets a bad example for people. And um, also with this um, pushing the boundaries, um, how far do we go? He just says, well, actually it makes it more fair if we increase, if we allow these performance enhancing drugs. So we're just going to keep upping the ante. If this is this is allowed, well then everyone should be able to do that. If this is allowed, then everyone should, eventually we're going to be coming to like this point where people are dying just so that they can get paid to play football for a game. And it starts becoming ridiculous. You have to draw the line somewhere. And that line was drawn for a reason because it offers bad effects like the aggression levels. It ruins the fairness of the game because you just have to keep on upping it and upping it and upping it before we're going to turn into the games not even being worth watching anymore because it's just going to be these bulky masses running around and we know it's not natural. So we're not going to value their talent as much because it's not talent, it's drugs. There's a difference. So actually I find that, yeah, very interesting. Um, and he didn't address the... Um, my point about the Kenny Griffith Jr. and Inchiro about how they really reach these high standards without taking drugs. So it's possible. We don't have to make these people take drugs. And he says it's their choice. It's their choice to take drugs. Well, if you're going to apply that to sports, then you're going to have to apply that to the whole country. and We're going to become a country of drugged out people more than we already have drugs. Drugs can be proven to be bad in instances, and we shouldn't just legalize them because that's what makes it fair. No, what makes it fair is that you don't have these drugs and you work on natural talent alone. That's, there's, that's just so, that's beneficial in our society. We uh, value talent. Well, he's kind of offering, well, we value these drug uses more so than the talent because the drugs counteract the talent and make up for things that aren't naturally there. So it does ruin the fairness of the game. I'm going to go ahead and accept now the definition of fairness, but under the fact that it's fairness of the game, not fairness to the players, just to the game. And with that, I'm going to go into that she's saying that war isn't, or I'm sorry, the um, neg is saying that war is not beneficial. We're not talking about war. All I was using was an example to show how Campianism didn't apply to the weighing mechanism of this round. And I believe we've established that. As far as the um, risks, you know, Randy Ramirez. Did, you know, I'm not even going to address that because it's not really even a point. Aggression happens with people that have testosterone and don't have testosterone. Aggression is going to happen. I mean, Mike Tyson um, with the bite of the ear, he wasn't taking steroids. Nobody was taking steroids in that fight. Uh, OJ never took steroids. Okay. Uh, however, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger did, but he never killed anybody. In fact, he's a governor of a state. Huh. Well, um, athletes becoming bulky. You know, it's not necessarily a good thing to be bulky. In fact, if you look at all of these special forces in the military, they're quite slim. They're not bulky. They're just very, very toned. Steroids isn't a matter of building bulk, building huge muscle. It's a matter of recovery. Steroids recover the muscles that you've torn while working out. So in order to become huge and bulky, you have to work out constantly and take steroids so that you would rebuild that muscle. So it's not necessarily the steroids that are making these people huge. It's their habits that they use with the steroids. And um, as far as fairness in football, because we now added that to the weighing mechanism, I'm going to say, or in any sport for that matter, in order for it to be completely fair, we would either have to legalize performance enhancing drugs for everybody in these sports, 
Or we'd have to ensure that these drugs were wiped off the face of the planet, never to be recreated again. Because players are going to get a hold of this, and if it's illegal, and they're doing it while it's illegal, and they're not getting caught, they have an unfair advantage. However, if it was not illegal, then everybody would be on the same playing field and would have, um, would have the same amount of advantage. So under fairness, I think we can go with a, way, with a voter on my side for steroids need to, or performance enhancing drugs need to be legalized within the sport of football, or within the sport, professional sports, in order to make it fair. As far as utilitarianism, I just want to throw this out here. The best season for baseball, as far as ratings and most profitable, without a doubt, was in 1997. That race was to break Roger Maid's home run record uh, for a single season. That race was between uh, Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa. Both players were on steroids, but it was the most profitable and most entertaining season that ever has been played in baseball. So with that, I would like to be there with my voter for contention number one and contention number two. That's that performance enhancing drugs increase the benefit for the economy and revenue and the benefit for entertainment. Now, 